Setting up OBS to stream to YouTube is really easy. Let me show you how. First thing to do is right click OBS Studio, wherever it is, and run as administrator. Or if you do not have OBS Studio yet, then make sure you go to the obsproject.com website and you grab the Windows, Mac, or Linux version, whatever it is that you need. Once we open OBS, make sure that you go up to the Help tab and click check for updates. These updates are going to improve functionality, bug fixes, and also are going to add new features in order to make streaming to YouTube and Twitch a lot easier. In order to get connected to YouTube, you need to go to the settings section and you need to hit the stream tab. Once we're in the stream section, you're gonna to wanna to hit service and make sure that YouTube is enabled, not Twitch or any of the other ones. You can ignore the server and just hit connect account. It just allows you to sign in, make things super easy. Make sure you allow OBS to access your account by hitting continue. A message will appear saying authorization completed successfully. You can close this page. Now that we're back in OBS studio, we need to make sure that the ignore streaming service recommendations box is checked. And the reason for this is we do not agree with the video bitrate options that they are giving us right now and we're going to custom set those in just a moment once you've done this make sure you hit apply you'll notice that a couple of screens appear on your obs so go ahead and hit ok and we're going to move this one it's called a dock we're going to move it over to the left side and this is our chat box and it could slip right in there you can put it anywhere you want but i recommend obviously left or right that makes the most sense to me you'll also notice the live control panel is now enabled as well in order to use this we need to sign in again but once we do it'll have some neat features to it so go ahead and sign in before we go any further there is something that you need to know YouTube requires that in order for you to start live streaming, you have to wait a 24 hour period of time to go through a verification process. Let me show you how to do that. In order to start the verification process, we're going to hit YouTube Studios icon right there. And now what I need you to do is hit create and then go live. And you will see a timer appears on the screen to let you know that you have requested access on blank, 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 blank and it will be available after this timer. Now knowing you have a waiting period, choose one of two things to do. You can A, come back later and watch the rest of this video once your waiting period is done. Or B, you can watch the rest of this video and then when your waiting period is done, you're already ready to stream. I'll let you decide that and I'm gonna keep going. If your page has a request button on it, to start this countdown, make sure you hit that before you do whatever it is you're going to do. And for more information on the waiting process, you can hit the learn more button and it will tell you basically the same thing that I was telling you already. Once your channel is unlocked, go ahead and hit the manage broadcast button. In the manage broadcast section, you can set a lot of different settings, including your title, your description, your privacy to public, unlisted or private. You could even set your category to gaming, film, autos, etc., etc. I would highly recommend for most of you that you're gonna want to say, no, it's not made for kids. So whatever you're doing is probably not made for kids. Also, it affects monetization ability. You can add your stream thumbnail as well here and additional settings, including latency, normal and low are generally fine. I would always enable DVR. This allows for your stream to be recorded and then posted to YouTube. You could always unlist those videos, but sometimes it's good to have them in case you wanna clip something from it. And finally, you can schedule the broadcast for later by clicking this button. If your schedule for later is unchecked, then your options will be create broadcast and create broadcast and start streaming. This will make you go live immediately, but hold on, don't do that because we need to go through your bitrate settings before you even think about sending this broadcast through. The next important things we need to do are in settings, and they are in video, first off. And generally speaking, you're gonna want your stream, your base canvas, and your scaled canvas, you're gonna want these to be the same, and you're gonna want them to be 1920 by 1080, because most devices and internet speeds can keep up with that amount. It's pretty common to do 60 frames per second, especially in gaming or something that's high action. But if you're finding that you need to lower the settings in order to maintain your internet speed bitrate stuff that we're gonna talk about in just a moment, then you could always lower it to 30 frames per second, especially if you're doing talking head stuff. But once you're done with these settings, hit apply and then move on to the output tab. Make sure that your output mode is on advanced instead of simple in order to access these options. 
For the output tab, there's a couple options here, specifically for the video encoder and for the bitrate. For video encoders, there are a few options. You have the GPU-based options, which are the NVIDIA, the AMD, the sometimes Intel will come up here, the Mac, anything that, in, that says like an actual name will most likely be your GPU. GPUs are the best way of encoding because they have generally a dedicated chip and allows the GPU to be able to do other things while it's also encoding your stream. Pick a GPU encoder if you can. If you cannot, if that is not available, then you could do X264, which means that your CPU is encoding that profile instead. So I'm going to stick to something very friendly to all platforms and do H.264. I'm going to leave the rate control at CBR and your bitrate is determined by your internet speed. In order to do that, you need to go to a site like speedtest.net and you need to hit the go icon in the middle in order to test your internet connection. As you can see, my test results were a 904.91 for the download and a 928.77 for the upload. And the way that I like to do this is I like to take the number that I have and I like to cut it in half. 928 does not break evenly in half very well. So I'm gonna just imagine that my upload speed is actually an 800 megabytes per second. 800 cut in half is 400. So we're gonna assume it's 400 megabytes per second. The easiest way to do this, to convert it into kilobytes, is to just add three zeros to the end. So my 400 is now going to be 400,000, and that's gonna equal kilobytes. 400,000 kilobytes per second is exactly how much I have internet speed wise to use for the bit rate of my stream. To reference that to an actual chart, we would then go to the official YouTube recommended streaming settings, which I will link in the description. And on this page, it tells you exactly the requirements that they recommend for each quality level. As you can see, we are doing 1080p at 60 frames per second. If we go over to the right side of the chart, you can see that for 1080p 60 frames per second, they recommend a 12 megabytes per second upload speed. This is in order to have a stable stream, according to YouTube. The easiest way to change megabytes into kilobytes is to just have three zeros at the end. In this case, 12 megabytes per second is going to be 12,000 kilobytes per second. And in case you're wondering why I keep saying just add three zeros, it's because every 1,000 kilobytes equals one megabyte. So it works out cleanly as long as you're on an even number to be able to just add three zeros to the end to convert it. And we don't have to be exact with these bit rates, we just have to be somewhat close. So if I only need 12,000 kilobytes per second, in order to have a healthy stream and I have 400,000, then that means I am very much in the clear and I can go ahead and just put my 12,000 and be done. There's no point in using the whole 400,000 as there's no actual gain past what YouTube is recommending. However, if I was recording at 4K 60, then I would need a lot higher bit rate of 35,000 megabytes per second. Let's go through a hypothetical situation that probably will apply to most of you. Let's say you did a speed test and that speed test yielded you an upload speed of 20 megabytes per second. You would then cut that 20 megabytes per second upload speed in half and you'd have 10 megabytes per second. Then add three zeros and you now have 10,000 kilobytes per second. And in this circumstance, if you were doing 1080p 60, with H.264, then you would be under the recommended amount of 12,000 kilobytes per second needed to have a healthy stream. So then at that point, you may consider going down to 30 frames per second or even 720p and 60 frames per second. I hope that makes a little more sense to you on the bitrate end of things. If you have any questions about how that math works out, then please comment below. Let's go ahead and put in my 12,000 recommended bitrate. As for the keyframe interval, YouTube actually recommends two seconds. For the preset, I recommend P4, which is medium to medium quality. The lower you go, 
to a P7, the best quality you have, but the harder it is for your computer to run and vice versa. The higher up you go to P1 will be lower quality, but will be the easiest for your computer to run. It's been proven by other content creators that medium quality seems to be the best return for what you're giving up. Tuning, stick to high quality and multi-pass mode, turn it to single pass. Your profile can be on high and I would turn off look ahead and cycle visual tuning. Your GPU is most likely going to be zero if you have a dedicated GPU, which means it's not tied to your CPU. If you have a laptop, then most likely you will have a GPU tied to your CPU. But in order to check that, the easiest thing you can do is actually just hit control alt delete and go to task manager. When you pull your task manager up, go ahead and hit the performance tab. And you will see down here at the bottom that it states what number your GPU is named. As you can see, my GPU is named GPU zero, but you may have multiple GPUs show up and you need to figure out which one is the better GPU. And then you need to put that number in this spot. Your B frames should be a max of two. And then once you're done with these settings, you can go ahead and hit apply. Now that you've set up your settings, before you start streaming, just be aware that you probably want an overlay of some kind in order to be more visually appealing to your audience. There are many ways to find overlays, both professional paid ones and also professional free ones. I'm going to show you a couple quick methods so you know where to look. The first site I would recommend to a lot of people is owned.tv and you can hit the stream overlays package and YouTube overlays and you'll see a bunch of overlays right here. They're all pretty neat, professional, detailed, and come with just about everything that you need, including alerts and things like that. They're pretty inexpensive, and if you do wanna get one, then be sure to use my affiliate link down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra, it just helps support the channel. However, if you're not ready to pay for an overlay, like an owned overlay, which can be a little overwhelming at times, then don't worry about it. Right above my head should be some videos where we talk about how to set up stream elements, free overlays, and also an overlay that I give you for free from our personal designer. I look forward to seeing you in those videos. Let's keep learning OBS together.